Good afternoon. How are you? Well, it's uh, kind of overcast. See that sky? And uh, it's about 65, and I may make it uh, before it rains. I've been out uh, a little bit, and it's getting... It, it feels wetter every, <laughs> every 100 feet. So, uh, what's going on? Some of the same old stuff. I think it's interesting, though, to look at... Uh, I wanted to say creeping phenomenon, you know, something that, that moves and what is it moving in response to. And there's, there's stories about more Yiddish being used. And I wonder if that isn't directly proportional to the increase in discrimination, the anti-Semitism that we see. And we report it. Uh, the, the, the crap these people say... Uh, without running it through a strainer of any sort or commenting, by the way, that was anti-Semitic. Do you believe that? You know, we don't, it's like we have cut off our ability to analyze facts. And as a result, we propel misconduct of speech and action by our silence our quiescence. How are, we, how are we possibly going to prevail if that's our response? And it's not you and I. It is the people that see the baubles, the shiny things. Oh, let's put Trump on the air. Let's put this one on the air and so forth. And some of those are, are great ventures because in the best tradition of journalism, tough questions are asked. And the person, when asked a tough question, doesn't always give a good answer and often admits to things or runs away. I think of the first lawyer that was going to represent uh, Trump in New York, and uh, he was on with Ari when Ari asked him a question. He wanted to take the paper out of Ari's hand. Why did he need to do that? See, he was... That told me he was uncomfortable and anxious about the role he was playing, and the role he was playing was a political role. And it struck me that he didn't have political experience because somebody else would say, you got a piece of paper in your hand, so what is that? But instead he reacted in a way to give credibility that the paper meant something. So I'm thinking that, hey, are you anti-Semites out there? Why don't you give us all a break? Do a mitzvah. And uh, stop this hateful speech. Speech plus action. We've got the speech. And the action is always to come down hard on a person that you're discriminating against. Also, the Republicans make it easy to compare them with, oh, I don't know, outrageous groups in the 1920s and 30s in Europe. Because they make it very clear they, how intolerant they are of whole classes of people. Yes, of course, blacks, women, gays, Jews. Roman Catholics somehow or other got a pass after the KKK chased them. And I don't exactly understand that, except I think they thought they, being the irreligious masses, thought they needed more Christians on their side to make it all work. Hi. Oh, you're practicing. I'm practicing. Yeah, take care. <laughs> A neighbor is a terrific lady. Um, decided not to interrupt our walk and talk. Wasn't that nice of her? Now, the uh, in terms of the government taking care of us, now we know how Trump had no use to help us during the coronavirus, although he knew and told Woodward, and I've been over this, so I won't go over it again, that he knew it was a dangerous thing. And so now we have a new strain of coronavirus, and those of you who... Uh, well, suffer comorbidities and are perhaps at risk because of immunosuppression uh, experiences and so forth, should go out and get the uh, coronavirus, the latest uh, version. And I think it's still being cleared. But here's the problem. Uh, the government may not be paying for it. And your insurance may not pay for it. That would be, a, that would be something. And, I, and that's, that can be a function of geography, politics belief systems, pressure, all sorts of things. So 
you should watch that in your personal life and you should wear a mask like it's a red badge of courage uh, because I've had uh, people call me who've been very careful and then all of a sudden they took a plane ride and they got coronavirus. And two things about that. Uh, one is getting it, how severe. But the second is, did you get long COVID? And the only way to avoid long COVID is not to get COVID in the first place. Now, we do everything we can. And some of us, despite our best efforts, will be exposed to it. But there it is. Now, Herr Trumpf uh, is out there speaking with hate to coerce people into his position. From beginning to end, you know, it's not limited to the court cases. It's also in politics. It's in every way. And to hear him, I hear the speeches that I read about and saw in broken tape recordings when I was younger. And now anybody can see it. If you go on YouTube, you can see all of these things for yourself. And you should. If you, if you need to feel what the power was of this crazy dictator to, just to, to see how he moved an audience. And you don't have to know Germany. You don't have to sprechen Deutsch. All you have to do is listen to the cadence, the insistence, the, the terror, the screaming, and then how he had molded the people into an instrument of his insanity to kill and hate. And that's what Trump is doing in America. Nothing less. Don't fool yourself that this is just another politician or just another movement in America. It is not. And it's more severe and dangerous than anything McCarthy did, as bad as that was, as terrible as that was. The Republicans give us quite a lesson in what government would be should they succeed. So, for example, we have the Republicans in charge of the House, but we have a fractured party among the Republicans, and they can't decide what the spending bill should be. And if they don't figure that out quick enough, the government will be shut down and people will hurt. And the government will hurt because the last time we did this, it cost us billions of dollars to write the machinery again because of how late in the process we figured out these spending bills. What's the problem? The problem is, despite an agreement to take Social Security and Medicare off the table, there are those in the Republican group in the House, and in the Senate too, I'm sure, who want to take those things off offline somehow, not pay for them, not pay for them in full, reduce them in some way or other. And if you think about an America in which we're baby crazy, whether or not you want a child, our government, the Republican side anyhow, wants you to have that child. We don't want you to cross lines. We don't care if it challenges your health. We don't care if you didn't want the child. We don't care if you were raped. We don't care about any of those things. We just want it the way we want it. Because what? I don't know. We want fodder for wars with the Far East. Well, who are these people? What are they doing? And the answer is they compromise us at any turn. And one of the most significant recent things is how we are going to spend funds to accomplish what the Constitution set out, among other things, providing for the general welfare. And the Republicans don't believe in a general welfare. They believe in a, an autocratic state in which their boy, big bad Trump, does what he wants to do, and that's just fine with them. Well, it's not fine with me or you or most Americans if they think about it, but they're not thinking about it. And one of the reasons they're not thinking about it, to return to the issue, is people are giving him a buy. Like, this is ordinary, and it's not ordinary at all. So, the, uh, the other thing I find interesting is how <laughs> being a, a space guy, in the sense of as a kid, it moved me from buying magic tricks every week at a store across the street from where I give my confession on Saturdays. And my confession, I tell you now, deep dark secrets, uh, 
It was more like I got in an argument with my brother. <laughs> we hit each other. He was three years younger, so that was some sort of a sin. And I go across the street and learn a magic trick. And I practice it, and I try it out on people. And so I had amassed quite a few tricks. But then all of a sudden, in the sky, I could see Sputnik with my better eyes at that age. In New York City, in the Bronx, I could see it. And I realized that was not magic, that was real. Now, all of us who have seen all the movies know you're not supposed to bring back to Earth things from outer space, because we don't know what it'll do. And there is a sample of an asteroid, Bennu, B-E-N-N-U, that has landed, I believe it's a desert, in Utah, and it's right out there, and they're gonna analyze it, and this is always where the movies go wrong. You know, some little wiggly thing that gets touched and gets in their body and spreads all over and destroys all sorts of things. How do you protect against that? Because in the movies, they don't know that it's gonna do that, or they wouldn't do it. And, but NASA is gonna look at this thing. Like, I guess it's a variation of whatever elements there are on Earth. And the, the practical thing they say is, you know, we have to be concerned about this asteroid hitting Earth. And so, but what are we going to learn from a sample of the, of the thing? How we can blow it up? What, I mean, I don't know. But there it is. So when you start hearing, dee, 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 you'll know that they made a mistake. It'll be on a national channel and we'll hear that music. The debate continues, and that is the failure to debate. There's, it's like a form. Everybody in journalism has to sign a form before interviewing one of the Nazi leaders. I did say Nazi. I think that's about right. Trump especially. That they know what they're doing when they questioned him. They have Now, of course, we're not going to have that. But individuals have to decide in their background if they are up to questioning these people. That is how they deal with the lies. They have to have a way. If they don't have a way to deal with the lies, which pour out of these events, then you can't do it. And how do you deal with the lies? You counter you trash talk. Oh, on a better level than this moron. But yes, you have to be there fighting and swinging and so on. And somebody tell me, how is it the Dems can be so enthused to throw Menendez out of the Senate when they can't get their fire in the belly up to go after Trump? Who are these people? We have a, a group of people who never should hold public office, ever, and should be removed, and in both parties for different reasons. We have the evil Republicans, and I mean that because those who are silent are evil and those who are active are certainly evil. But then among Democrats, we have a silence. We uh, misgauge the issue. We make it sound more acceptable than it really is, and that's not acceptable. So those are my thoughts as I wander in my cathedral of trees, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.